first of all, I'd like to thank Bank of Ireland for inviting the culture industries here this morning as well. It's great to be here. Um, I suppose, um, I'll just start here. Um, that's what we attempt to do. That's the thing, uh, the, basically the overriding thing from our point of view. Um, that's what we're always trying to achieve. Um, it's very important to us. Uh, it's a raison d'etre, uh, and it has been, and always will be. Uh, this is what uh, the presentation very simply outlines who we are, uh, what we do, and where we want to go. Um, that was the, the vital stats on, on the 2013 festival, uh, 165,000 attendances, 190 events, and 29 venues over two weeks, um, and that was the cost. And if you want to uh, never suffer hair colour change, doing that many events in two weeks is not advisable. Um, it also puts very sore on uh, your stomach as well, let me point out. Uh, but it is good fun, and uh, it is what uh, the Arts Festival always wanted to be about. Uh, that presently is our economic impact. Uh, the media evaluation is obviously from last year, as we're still evaluating it this year. Um, we are the biggest uh, arts festival in the country. We're uh, a key cultural enterprise and uh, we will consider ourselves a flagship for culture tourism and in particular for um, tourism in the west of Ireland. Um, that is where our, our audience is presently coming from. Uh, we are still uh, very much uh, engaged uh, with our local community. Uh, we would always hope that that would be the case. Uh, one of the big positives for Galway Arts Festival is the amount of public ownership of the event. Um, People are never afraid to tell you what they thought of the event. Uh, we're very of Galway, and as my predecessor once told me, he said, uh, always stand at the door as people are coming out. It's better they tell you. Um, and they do, and they tell you both ways. And in a very sophisticated world of audience feedback, uh, it's hard to beat standing at the back of the hall and being told right after it happens. And uh, for the most part, it's positive. Um, our audience, those are basically, as I say, the stats of it, 82% are ABC1 and 58% are female. Um, obviously, uh, it's with, that would be a general, almost global thing around the arts. Uh, our motto is basically, ladies have more taste. Uh, we basically, this is what we do. Um, these are the art firms that uh, we have been engaged in uh, and will continue to engage in. Um, Theatre is hugely important, I'll talk about later, about how we're using it, uh, likewise with street theatre. Um, music, uh, these are basically the different types we cover. It has always been thus in Galway Arts Festival. It changes from year to year. Uh, we, we, we don't programme each year on all these forms, but um, one of the great things about our job is uh, we can pick things we really like and that we think other people will like. There are not many people who, who get to do that uh, and get paid for it. Um, basically, uh, this is the talks, discussions, visual arts, comedy, we, we do them all. So getting on to uh, our key areas of focus, um, those are them, culture, tourism, producing and curating work, presenting work, uh, new perspectives that we will be delivering over the next number of years, and what is very key to us, audience development. Uh, with regard to culture tourism, um, this is the context in which we're operating. About 40% um, of all tourists into Europe now uh, are coming uh, for the purpose of cultural engagement. Uh, it is uh, one of the biggest growing areas within tourism, and uh, the value of culture tourism to the Irish economy uh, is oh, just over 5 million, and uh, those would be from Falch, Ireland. Um, these are our objectives. Uh, Developing the festival as a flagship event, uh, as a flagship event for both the arts uh, and the West. Uh, we're very conscious that uh, as a festival, we have a, a massive number of cultural partners, and we very much want to be a flagship for those partners who sometimes can't get the voice that we have because we are able to deliver a certain amount of impact. And it's very important that they are recognized as part of that. We, hopefully uh, represent a, a family of cultural interests. Uh, 
We do want to uh, develop ourselves as an international festival brand, and to that end, we've just uh, completed uh, a brand audit, and we're looking at our positioning internationally at the moment. And that is our target, basically, is to increase that audience to 30% by 2016, which is uh, a challenge, but one we're looking forward to. Um, key to it all, and a big problem for festivals, and there are several other festival organizers here, is what we call the Mayfly Syndrome. We basically arrive in early summer, uh, we look good, everybody says, oh, it's that time of year again, and then we die. And then you hear from us the following year. Uh, that traditional model is, is no longer appropriate in a social media world. If one wants to uh, develop relationships, one has to keep those relationships going as uh, somebody else said to me quite recently, uh, we're too old for summer romances. So we have to go the whole year round. And in order to do that, uh, we have to develop more content throughout the year. What this will represent is mainly in an online context, we will be generating new content for our online platforms, but also we will be doing some events throughout the year. And key to all that is once you develop that content is then uh, how you deliver it and whom you deliver it to. So customer relationship management is becoming more and more important and we're about to implement uh, a new state-of-the-art system to deliver that. Uh, we very much feel that people who are interested in the arts are a community, and if we're to treat them like that, then we must keep communicating with them. And uh, as anybody knows, um, online is the most cost-effective and most time-effective manner of, of getting out there and doing that. Um, it also offers you many opportunities to change your mind, which print does not. Uh, that is the current state uh, of Galway Arts Festival's online platforms at the moment. Um, the one I should point out though is, is Gaff TV. We have our own television station online. Um, we found it very difficult because we did not fit into a uh, particular category for most of the national broadcasters. And in the middle of a conversation, we decided that what we really needed was our own television station. So we decided to develop that. And at the moment, we have um, just over 50 people come and volunteer. Uh, they're a mixture of postgraduate students and people who work in television to deliver a, approximately anywhere between three and four hours. These are uh, all done on our YouTube channel. And they all uh, usually go somewhere between a minute and three minutes. Uh, for some of our more significant ones, we have a couple of jewels in the crown where we can get them. But um, they provide some wonderful things. There's a, uh, a very cool band called Bonnie Ver who came to Europe in 2008 and in their contract was specifically the uh, proviso that they talked to nobody. They did Glastonbury, they talked to nobody. They did the Prince of Wales Trust, they talked to nobody. They came to Galway and two 19-year-olds saw them, jumped over a wall, walked up to the lead singer and said, hey, we're huge fans, we work for Gaff TV, would you mind speaking to us? And the guy gave the only interview that year that he gave, and he was one of the coolest things. So sometimes it helps uh, to be 19, year old, 19 years old and not listen to what anybody tells you. Um, basically, the other side of it for us in terms of culture and tourism is basically what we call our cultural billboards. Um, we have begun developing our own co-productions, which premiere at Galway Arts Festival, and then we intend to tour both nationally and internationally. Uh, on one hand, we hope they're wonderful pieces of art. On the other hand, they're cultural billboards for the brand. Uh, our best example to date uh, was uh, in 2011. Uh, we had a show called Mr. Man, which went on to New York and, and to London and uh, provided us not only with sold out shows, but provided us uh, with huge coverage in most of the papers of record. Uh, in the New York Times, there's a pick of the day, uh, which can be anything culturally. Um, Mr. Man was their pick of the day for 14 days leading into Christmas in New York. As a result of which the show sold out, we didn't have to do anything much. It got a page and a half. It got everything from The Observer to uh, Vogue in London, including a photo shoot of Enda and Killian, which just said, Mr. Man. You know, even with our best marketing hats on, we couldn't have come up with that. So things ha have a life 
uh, of their own, and they promote, and they also promote in a very authentic way. Like if we had, which we never could have afforded, taken a page and a half of an ad in the New York Times, it wouldn't have had the same impact as Ben Bradley saying, go to this, it's great. So this has become huge for us. Uh, Basically, a show fabulous beast with the right to spring in Petrushka, who are here in, uh, in Festival 2013, has just finished a tour in Australia, and the wonderful Alwyn Freire, and River Run has done Kilkenny, and has done Dublin, and will go on internationally in 2014. Um, as I say, in order to do that, we need to be producing and creating our own work. Uh, if we want more people to come, then we have to have more unique things for them to come and see and that they can only see in Galway and that they see in Galway first. Um, so uh, we've done seven major co-productions and commission stuff in the last three years. Those are uh, a mixture of the things that we have done and the people we have worked with. The picture you see is from uh, the Right of Spring, uh, which was part of uh, Stravinsky's centenary celebrations. According to Michael Keegan Dolan, he thought it was a very good idea that we should do this and he persuaded us that it was, and he was right. Um, we have three projects in pre-production as co-productions for 2014, uh, and we hope that uh, two of them will have legs beyond the festival and will go out and continue to go out into 2015 and 2016 and be a banner for Galway Arts Festival internationally. Uh, I should point out the two key target markets, both for what we're trying to do with the brand and what we're trying to do with these are the UK and the US. Primarily, a lot of these projects are text-based. Therefore, they're the two biggest English language markets, and that's where we go there. Also, they're the areas within our international market. Uh, US would be one, and UK would be two. Uh, for instance, we, uh, at the moment, have more ticket buyers on the east coast of the US uh, than we do in Munster, so we have a bit of work to do in, in, in both areas. Um, also, while we are doing our, our theatrical productions, we were also very keen to develop uh, visual arts, which was a weaker part of the festival, and one of our artistic director was hell-bent, in fairness to him, on, on developing. Um, that ambition, to be honest, got quite out of hand very quickly. Um, we decided what we really needed is Galway was missing uh, a big municipal gallery space. So we decided that the only thing we could do in those circumstances was go out and create one. So um, the one you see in the background there behind uh, Hugh O'Donoghue was actually the third one we created. Um, we are very dependent on the generosity of um, basically property owners who commit in January to say, OK, I'll give it to you in July. They're usually big spaces. They're obviously you know, expensive spaces, and yet they have done it uh, for us. This particular space was 22,000 square feet, uh, which made it the biggest temporary gallery space in Ireland. Uh, and it allowed us to do things that we never thought possible. Quite often, you think you know, it's about imagination. Sometimes the, the imagination is limited by the possibilities. In this case, we were basically going into a space where if you kicked a football, from one end out of your hand, you couldn't reach the far end. Uh, and that was fantastic. What the space actually did was change our mind about everything. So we decided that that was an obvious sign from God that we should go for it uh, and basically build gallery spaces. Uh, this we did, and we decided each year that we would try and engage uh, with an Irish artist uh, who would be known internationally and do a show with them. And that Usually, most artists go into a space and they make the work fit the space. What we did in all these cases was take the artist to this basically giant shop and say, where would you like us to put the walls? How do you want it painted? What do you want the floor like? And again, all of them changed their minds about what they wanted to do. And uh, resulted in what we thought were uh, <coughs> wonderful experiences, both for us for the artist and for the audiences. In each of these years, uh, almost 30,000 people went through this gallery space in two weeks. There were queues for when it was opening in the morning, which we found very, very surprising, but uh, wonderful. 
So did the artist um, Huey here, who you see, um, who recently actually um, designed the new window uh, for Westminster Abbey, uh, commissioned by the Queen, which is a far cry from uh, a Manchester Irish upbringing. Um, Huey decided he would do a talk. So he said, you need a microphone, Huey. He said, no, no, no. He said, there'll be 20 people, Max. I know how these things work. There was 200 people, and uh, both they and Huey had an interesting experience as Huey attempted to talk to all of them at the same time and take their questions. And it was a wonderful engagement. And lots of people who came in to look at the pictures got to talk to a really famous artist in a wonderful way for both the artist and for... Um, the audiences. So uh, they have proved very, very successful. Likewise, Brian Maguire, it was a wonderful exhibition uh, of prison painting, something that he is very, very interested in. Uh, very poignant and uh, a fantastic exhibition for getting discussion going around social issues. The last one last year was John Gerard, uh, young artist. He hadn't exhibited in Ireland for seven years. He uh, had done all the big shows. He was Manchester International, Venice Biennale. He had actually done work uh, in the Royal Opera House. And as you can see from the person standing in front, he calls them digital sculptures. They're huge things. And uh, the number of people who were standing in front of it, staring at it uh, for long periods of time, the number of questions we got, is this art? Etc. We're wonderful because that's what the debate is all about. That's what the experience is about. That's what the Vista experience is about. That's what we're trying to do all the time. It has to be about questions. And again, he did a wonderful talk. Uh, there was actually a neighbour of mine who, according to himself, had no interest in visual arts that happened to be in there, kind of because I had forced him to go and look at it. Heard John Gerard talking and stayed and enjoyed it and now ask me a lot of questions about video art and digital sculptures that I don't know the answer to anymore. Um, sadly, that gallery space um, is, is no longer available to us. In fairness, I haven't given this for three years, they've got a tenant, and we have to be grateful and just say it was a wonderful space. Thank you very much for three great years. Uh, uh, Harcourt uh, were wonderful to deal with, and... Uh, we now are in the process, as it says, of reimagining and relocating. So anybody here who's a 22,000 square foot space <laughs> or bigger, we're up for it if you are. Um, we're going to continue, as you saw earlier, we talked about art forms. Uh, we're going to continue to present all those art forms that people have come to expect from us. Um, we're looking at different ways of doing it. Uh, we've done it for 36 years. Um, we really enjoy, uh, and it is really a privilege, to put on fabulous uh, Irish and international work. And uh, Galway is, like from a visitor experience, Galway is special because it is a small town. A lot of the artists who normally operate in, in major urban centres run into people who have seen their show. Like uh, a company, Steppenwolf, who were here, thought everybody in Galway was unbelievably cultural because they kept running into people who had been to their show. But they normally only do New York, Chicago, London, and Sydney. So um, they just couldn't get over. On the first night, their waiter had been to see the show where they did the opening night. One of them was going home in a taxi where the guy had seen it. They were blown away by it altogether. And the thing about it is Steppenwolf kept coming back, and we have now developed a relationship with another company, which was a spin-off of Steppenwolf. So, you know, that waiter, that taxi driver, they created a bigger, more authentic impression of Galway as a cultural place than we ever could with pictures or selling. So that sense of public ownership it can never be underestimated in terms of the sale. Um, recently, we've decided that we, we should expand and look at different ways of doing things and um, looking at how we can interact more with an audience uh, some of our more traditional art forms, you go in, we turn out the lights, you watch the performance, we turn on the, li on the lights, and you go home. And in the 21st century, we feel that dialogue is everything and interaction is everything, so that we had to uh, get in on the act. We, the first thing we did was we got the creators of shows to do after-show talks. And the audiences for that were very significant. We couldn't get over how significant. For instance, the Mr. Man, and Dan Killian, did uh, a post-show talk, and I should point out that there was a break of 20 minutes while 
Killian went and had a shower and come back. So people sat. Out of an audience of 450, seven got up and left. That was all that left. And in a queue of 50 outside, waiting to get in to see it. So we thought there's definitely something happening here. The Outgoing Tide, which was a very touching show about the onset of dementia, uh, we had as many people for the talk as we had for the show. So, and these were people who wanted to talk about issues as much about the art. So we decided we would formalize it and we would do a pilot project with a thing we called First Thought. Um, and that's what it is. It showcases um, basically thought leadership on ideas and creative best practice. Um, basically, the idea of creativity came out of basically what we like to call our middle-aged men rants. Um, we often feel that people mention creativity and we are a creative people and that's the end of it. That we, we don't actually foster creativity as much as, as we should. If you are basically a fabulous 10 year old hurler, you will, you will basically be put in an academy so that someday you will play for the county. If you're a great tennis player, you will be doing Saturday mornings. Even now if you're a good coder, you're going to code or jodo dojo on a Saturday morning. But the one thing is creative people. We don't take them out of anything. We usually take the opposite idea of trying to squeeze it out of them and getting everybody to go into that middle bit. We need to be taking people out earlier and we need to people, those people to be basically let fly as much as they can. Like one of the, the things we did say is let's face it, one Steve Jobs in this economy is home and dry. We're not a big nation. We need these people, and we need these people on our side. So instead of frustrating them and putting in barriers, we felt that what we needed to do, like I am doing now going on a middle-aged man rant, is basically we needed to focus this and get this up uh, and be talking about it and using ourselves as a platform for this. I should point out that we were going to do this in both an arts and in non-arts ways. Um, so that was it. We also decided that it would be key to have it as both a physical and a digital event. Going back to what I was saying about online content generation, this was basically one of the, the most cost effective ways we could do it. Basically people in discussions uh, don't run around, they don't claim anything, they don't require much lighting, they're dead easy to film and uh, it, basically it was very easy for us to get that up online and uh, as of yesterday, the first three are on the Galway Arts Festival website uh, in their entirety if you want to watch them, and we'll be delivering more. Um, we also see uh, streaming as a way forward so that you can be a visitor to Galway Arts Festival in a digital age without actually being here. Our view being is if you go to it once digitally, we'll eventually get under your skin like Galway gets under the skin of so many people and you'll come. Um, basically, key to us, is our audience. Uh, audience is the heart of, of what we do. So in order to get audiences, we see our free events uh, as being key to the visitor experience and getting more visitors in. We've increased it significantly over the last uh, number of years. Uh, this has been greatly aided by people like the Arts Council, Falch Ireland, and the gathering as well this year basically helped us provide a wonderful weekend uh, in Galway. Uh, it also, that, what I'm saying about the visual arts program, again, that is key. What you're saying to people here is basically they don't need to make a big investment. We're not, they can come anytime because we ran stuff over weekends. You can go to the visual arts when it suits you. And uh, with regard to street, if you won't come to us, we will go to you. Uh, in terms of the arts, those are huge advantages. Um, again, we see audience development online has been key. Going back to the relationship building, we need that 52-week presence in order to keep those relationships building. And if you're curious about us, uh, we want to talk to you. You shouldn't have to wait till the following May to find out how we're doing. So we see ourselves very much going towards that 52-week presence on an ongoing basis. Uh, again, our customer relationship management strategy will be key in how successful or not we are. Um, I should point out that three or four years ago, we didn't know what CRM meant. It is now taking up more of our time because everybody's a customer, everybody's a potential customer. And uh, I think in the arts, we're very lucky in the sense that uh, it's reasonably easy for us to build communities of interest. You know, people are interested or curious or they're not. It's our job to take them to the next level and the next level. Like almost a third 
of the people who come to Galway Arts Festival are repeat visitors. So as long as we keep giving the good experience to more and more people, they sell for us and they keep coming back and they bring others with them.